Okay, this is the uh, 2023 budget meeting of the White Lake Library Board of Trustees. Uh, call to the meeting to order at 647. Um, what's it, uh, roll call. Roll call. Uh, Richie Blue. Present. Jake Dudek. Here. Karen Wines. Here. Gwendolyn Newton. Here. And we don't have Jennifer Schultz or Beth Lewis at this time. Well, we expect um, Jennifer, Jennifer shortly. Yep. And I don't think I've heard from so heard. Beth is unexcused. Okay. 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 So next, well, um, next on the agenda is uh, approval of the agenda. The agenda is before you. Are there any? I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Okay. I will second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. An opportunity for public comment. Having no public comment, we move to review of the preliminary 2023 budget. Okay, you have updated sheets in front of you <clears throat> for everything. Okay. All we would like to begin. Here it is. Um, oh, she's here. <laughs> Jennifer Schultz. There we go. <laughs> so once Jen gets settled, maybe we just start to look up. Talk about maybe the differences from 2022 to 2023. So yeah, um the first one, Jen, and we're gonna look the first one. Okay. And it should be uh three both that I mean sorry, right there. Yes, yeah, so and you open that. The real gonna be one. the budget narrative and the big spreadsheet. Yeah, there's a salary spreadsheet. Okay. okay, yeah. The other one is the other one is the one you're gonna go through first, so like the budget spreadsheet. Right there. Um no, next, next to that. Okay. No. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we now we're ready. Well, now we can start. <laughs> now we're ready. Now we're ready. Okay. Um, well, basically, uh, the biggest thing is the millage. So um, I did give you the projected uh, millage and how much more the, what we would get from the millage passing. So in last year, <clears throat> uh, compared to last year, this year we're going to get uh, about $176,000 more uh, because of that millage passage. Mm -hmm. Good. So I have one one question though. So where we so we have the projected twenty twenty two millage revenue, mm -hmm. and that's in yellow, and then the one seventy six one sixteen, mm -hmm. and then there's this comment below here. Above equals what we're missing due to rollback. What does that mean? You know what? I think that was just left there from from last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, I sort of thought yeah. that. Yeah. But that's why I thought I meant to ask you about the other Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Let that walk. Because then I started doing the math and I'm thinking, but this is what we this is the new amount that we're receiving from the manage. Yeah. Which is about one hundred seventy-five thousand, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Yeah. So going from there. Um, just adding in things, potential revenue, state aid, 
this year we had, if you look at 2021, we had 24,000, actual was 26. 2022, estimated 28, we came in at 30. So, okay. um, just give or take a little bit. I just kept it at 29, just to be modest. Same with penal fines. Okay. Uh, capital ass sale capital assets. You'll see the lawnmower is the in the pink column. Looking at 2022 sale of the lawnmower. Uh, I don't anticipate selling off anything else in 2023. That was just mm -hmm. a large item that needed. Okay, so we were, we were successful in selling the yes. Oh, awesome. very good. That's going to be in the later meeting. <laughs> but we now we can skip it. Okay, and then just with any questions on any of these other like copy or fax or coffee, I think the biggest thing I wanted to talk about here was the um, uh, the room booking. Mm -hmm. You'll see I put that up significantly. And part of that is what I'm hoping to do, which I'm gonna bring to you maybe in as a revise of the meeting room policy, I would like to add in the walnut room. It's a 10 person room as rentable. Okay. Just like the add it to our list of rooms that people can check out. We've had a number of um, small depositions and things like that where um, it's a small group of people that really fits the perfect room for them. Mm -hmm. And it's another way to make money. Is so, that the room we were in today? Mm -hmm. yeah. So currently it's not, and I think it would be ideal, but I can, I'm going to bring that as a policy change okay. for your review. Mm -hmm. Because that would help us to bring in more money. Uh, as of lately, we have had an uptick in room rentals, so that's that's good. And I do want to start to push for that more. Uh, let's see. Public donations. I do anticipate those going up if we get that memorial tree installed. Mm. And I want to start the educational sponsorships. Um, I've started reviewing my notes. So this is based. This is based on having that memorial tree installed. Mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully we can get it without it, but we definitely maybe we could even get a little more. Mm -hmm. But uh, between that and starting those uh, sponsorships, I'm hoping to get that. Okay. And friends have promised us uh, thirty thousand. That was a shock. Wow. It's very happy to that. that. It's very generous and yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. They've been breaking all sorts of records with just like the bookshelf and the sales and stuff. That bookshelf, they're they're amazed every week when they count it out that it's been a That's lot. Great. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, in the past, <clears throat> um, I don't recall us having a friend's donations line and I know we changed. We did not, which yeah. there was not yeah. one last year. I, I compared this to last yeah. year and we had um public donation line but we did not have the um the friends line which is fine. I mean the friends aren't going anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. I think the more that we split it out and understand where the money yeah, is coming no, from, the better. Oh certainly. Um you're going to see some new funds in here, and this is part of the new chart of accounts yeah. that Joe and I have been working on. Yeah, no, that's good. It's, it's... Any questions so far? No. Um, so we would move on then next would be to Ooh. the next spreadsheet. What's the interfunds transfer? So from what I could see from last year, that's the use of your fund balance. Uh, looks like last oh, year, 230 okay. was 230,000 was set aside. Yeah. Um, and I can get to that when we get towards the bottom. We can go back to that. Okay. Um, okay. So I wrote up a separate um, salaries and wage expense just to kind of explain out, as well as put information in the budget narrative about salaries and wages. Um, what you'll kind of see from that spreadsheet is this large one. Um, unfortunately, it's so large, I had to do it in two pages, <laughs> but it has pretty much everything you should need to know about what, what's going on. 
One of the largest things that, that is going on right now is I put a little note at the very bottom left because um, I was at a Library of Michigan directors meeting. And right now, it's, we may have to, it's on hold until February, but the minimum wage could increase to $12 at that time. In looking at several of our staff that were mainly the shelvers pages uh, that were close, one with the 2% increase would have almost just gotten there. The other two would have needed a little boost. So I did put that in there just in case that goes into effect. Um, otherwise, I'm suggesting a 2% increase across the board, as well as um, bringing up, there's two current clerks that are currently at 16 hours a week, and I'm hoping to bring them up to 20 hours a week, which you see under budgeted hours is per pay period, so that's why you're seeing uh, double for them. You know, I have to see if they're even going to be able to take it or, if, you know, they might have other jobs they might not be able to, but I at least want to see if we can get them up and the extra hours will help uh, cover the desk mm -hmm. and also help with the amount of linking and reading and processing that needs to go on in the back. Um, if you go down further, uh, you'll see under um, one of our staff members here who would be part-time until uh, later on when they graduate there. So they, it says that they would be $16.32 until they were able to take on the full time, which would be around the time of their graduation. So that's stated there. And then when you get down to the green area, that's where I'm suggesting the new. So I am suggesting a new, uh, let's go down here part-time clerk, and I put in the salary range, or the hourly range that I'm looking at, and when I calculate out the suggested amount of pay rate changes, I put it at the highest just so that we can make sure to budget for that. Certainly, I want to make, make sure that if I can get them somewhere in the range, that's, that's not the top of the range, depending on their experience, mm -hmm. but I would try to work with that. Um, so one part-time clerk, uh, one part-time youth, one part-time adult librarian each. You'll see another part-time youth, and this is a basically, it's a replacement. So in promoting the current youth part-time person to full-time, I don't want to lose her part-time position. So that's why you're seeing that there and you're seeing replace, okay? Um, the largest one here is a full-time tech services person, and this is a in the five months that I've been here, one of the areas that I've noticed is lacking is just what I was saying before with the um, with the ability to get things done in back. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of weeding that has to be done. And doing that, pulling together orders, um, that is really what a tech services department does is they take care of all of that. They take care of um, when books come in, getting them processed, uh, getting, making sure books are changed over when they come off the new shelf, changing them over so that they're not new anymore. All these little details that you were pulling clerks off of the desk now to try to get that done. Not all of them are trained for that. Some of them, um, it's just not something that they can really do. It's, it takes a little more expertise. And so having that one full-time dedicated person uh, would be a good idea in order to take over that. It would also take some of that, alleviate some of that from our current um, staff members and um, give them the chance to kind of breathe a little bit, cover desks, um, and, and help out. So that's my largest one there. Uh, next one down is um, a promotion of current uh, administrative assistant and making that administrative assistant slash marketing uh, with wanting to promote and get more uh, of the library promoted. Uh, this would be something that we need rather than developing a whole new um, position. It would just be easier just to have um, some hours added to our current administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I think that's that's so it. that person's other duties don't change. They're just going to take additional practice and become yeah. yeah. Um, below that, you'll see the sub budget. Um, some budget asking for four hundred hours for the year. They'll see what that accounts for with a range, a salary range there. Uh, as of September 22nd, we had used up around 351 hours, uh, and that's because we're just, you know, very short staff. Um, my hope is, in asking for all of this, the one issue that is out there is that asking, um, I'm hoping we're still going to be able to hire, I mean, because the, the staff shortage is everywhere. So I, while I right. ask for it, I'm Mm -hmm. Hopefully that people will yeah. apply. <laughs> so I, I still I have this question. So yeah. just about this comment down here, we have 15 part time today, and that's reflected here. And they're just highlighted, they're just not highlighted, they're white, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have these four part time. Right? Are you looking at the green? Yes. So you have the clerk, the youth, the adult, um, and then the one that's the replacement. So that's four. So that makes 19. It go, it'll go to one day. So, and that was my point when I sent you an email because it should be 19 part-time and 11 full-time, right? Well, that one part-time up higher is going to go away. That's okay. going to be filled well, in by is, that. Is that, that correct? 18. That's what I thought. I just yeah. heard that's why. I'm yeah, that one's because it does in place. It's okay. Yeah. And, yeah. All right. And then that and one. I was just asking for clarification because I, uh, I I can't figure this one out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think probably my eyes were blurred. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many times I went over and over. Okay. One. okay. Uh, all right. So there's the 2% suggested across the board um, for pay rates. Okay. Uh, projected annual wages is over here. What we proposed for last year, the difference for this year. Health insurance costs. So You'll see that we currently have some staff that don't take the health insurance, but they get the payout, so that's been calculated in there as well. Uh, I don't know. I'm guessing as to I put in payouts for the new uh, other people, mm -hmm. so I would that would I know two out of those three, but um, I'd have to see what happened with that. That's on the low end. I also did a high end. So, so where's the um what column is the one that's the go end? to health insurance cost per year low, health insurance cost per year high. So there's two columns. It's on the first page. Oh, thank you. Okay. Fourth from the right. Okay. Okay. So you would see in the green with the new people, you would see if all those if those mm -hmm. three took payouts versus in the high column, let's say the mm -hmm. new tech services position came with um, a family of four. So you'd see that calculated out there. And then I think um, I did for one, a full one for one. And then I know that that third one is the way it is. And then you'll see the contributions, the employee contributions to health insurance there where that comes off of low and high. You know what the percentage is? So, total compensation is to I didn't do percentages, I just did straight numbers. I can add another column if you'd like. I just want to know what the difference is. Like. You can look, you can, you can easily figure it out. You can easily, I figured it out. It's easy to figure out. It won't take a lot of I've already told you which. So, I have a question too about the um, health insurance. So. Um, do we have that in the employee contract that they are, um, if they don't take the health insurance that we um, do, I'm saying there's pay a pay, payout? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because most employees are taking that way. That's why I'm asking. Mm, yeah. Yes. I would say that um, most commercial employers today, if you do not take the, if you do not take health insurance, you don't receive compensation for it. That went away probably about five years ago for most large companies. So I didn't know if, it was, if we're contractually obligated to do that. I can look to see if we're contractually obligated or um, whether it's something that's policy. Well, it's, it's a... Um, I mean, I, I guess my point is, is we already have employees that are doing it today. I mean, I, I know as a, a former co working for a large company, 
you know, when it was taken away, and it was pretty common practice because I worked in that environment. However, is it something that if we're not contractually obligated, do we have to offer to new employees? And what is it competitive way to apply? Right. And that's but then if they take the insurance, that would cost the library more than the... Yes. Yes, but if they don't take the insurance and they don't need to take the insurance, it would cost the library less. But if they don't need the insurance, they would be more likely to take it because then you yes. have your double insurances when you go in. You can't take double insurance. Then, then it would, you can't so take double like, insurance any longer. No, but here's the thing. If yes, I, when I was working, if um, I didn't get that payout, then I had to pay to be on my husband's insurance. Right. But if I took my work's insurance, my husband's insurance was better. So for them to give me that money. Paid and that's that the way trip. I used to do it, but they don't. But that doesn't happen anymore in large corporations. If Boeing, it does. Because okay, <laughs> I'm still under his insurance. Okay. Yeah. Because I know like the automakers in this area no longer do it that way. You have to pay more if you're, if you're, um, if your spouse or significant other is, has the ability to take um, insurance and they choose to go on yours, you still have to pay that extra, but the company they're coming from does not have to pay them, doesn't have to reimburse them for not taking insurance. That, so my point is- We don't have, we don't have to, um, but it, um, it's factored into um, people's, you know, uh, um, expectation of what their total salary is. And I understand that, Rich, but I, my point is, is going forward, do, is it something we're contractually obligated to offer? Because that, because there wouldn't be an expectation there. Contractual what contract? When you sign, when you sign a, um, an agreement to come work for an employer. I, I think what it is, is I have to check policy. Is it something yeah. that Yes. Right. stated in policy and that that's the case that that's something you all want to change and i'm not saying i do i just want okay. to know what what we're obligated to do okay. yeah so it's in it's in the the current personnel because policy. because honestly you know we need more staff but yes um if you look closely at our budget almost half of this budget is for um staff services for staff for pay to meet payroll mm -hmm. okay Jeff. And I'm not saying that um, that it needs to change. I'm just saying that we need to be aware of that. And um, and I don't think that there's anybody in our staff. I'll be honest. I don't think there's anybody that's overpaid. Mm -hmm. I think that you know. I, I think that we are trying to make it competitive, but um, you know, I don't think we're paying the highest amount of salaries here either. Mm -hmm. You know, at this library, but and we want to attract people, but. We also need to be, you know, fiscally responsible to the to the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. A challenge. It is a challenge. You know, I took a good look at this and I went, oh, geez. And I had hoped originally, I worked with this budget several times. I originally had a 3%. Uh, I took it down to two and a half. And I finally took it down to two. Because to me right now, it's more important to have bodies because I don't have enough bodies. And you know, with with the cost of with um, inflation going up, it, that's a pretty minimal. It is. We raise. It is. It's not something I want to want right. to have to put in there. And I had a very struggle with doing it. But I also struggle with hearing that someone's sitting on a desk for six hours a day with very little time to get programming done, get other uh, professional development done, work on collection development. Well, and I, I think I when we moved into this new building, too, the understanding was we would have more staff. And I don't think that that's truly happened. So, um, no, the understanding was that we would not. We would not get more staff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I misunderstood that. Thank you. And that's a hard thing to go from, you know, this. I mean, we're not even covering the third desk. Mm -hmm. We're trying, but it's not. That's not, that's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. So. Where's the third desk? Team. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So. Did we have somebody covering team before? It's been off and on. Mm -hmm. Very well. So yes, Rich, you're right. That was the agreement when we 
when we started mm -hmm. rebuilding, we wouldn't be, we would, there would not be a need to increase staff. Yeah. I mean, it's a challenge now. We're coming up against the holidays and mm -hmm. it's very difficult to, I mean, I'm working just to be like, okay, you need desk coverage. Where can I, where can I be? I'll just take, I'll take my stuff and I'll go on desk, uh, which is fine. I mean, I, I, I come from a job where I did desk as well. So that's not a problem, but that does eat into my time too, to get stuff that I need to get done. Um, it, it, it eats into our assistant director's time. Um, so that's, that's why I finally had to go down to 2%, but mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, so, so I mean, it's it's just a huge amount, and it actually, it, um, our new mileage covers the doesn't even cover what we're increasing in staff. Oh, and you have a sticker shock to me too. Mm -hmm. Um, so just going forward with that, um, there were a couple of things that I wanted to talk about here. So the I was able to procure earlier this week a savings on our life insurance and accidental death and dismemberment number, <laughs> dismemberment. <laughs> say that five times, uh, policy. So that took that down somewhat. Uh, we did not offer a short and long-term disability policy. Uh, that was one of the things that um, I did have an opportunity before previous director left. Uh, she had mentioned that uh, it might be something that we want to look into. Obviously, it's a good thing to offer for people coming in, full timers coming in. So there is an amount there that would provide for that. So if that's what's something you wanted to offer. If not, we don't have to offer that. And I can still get the special price on the um, life insurance and accidental stuff. I don't have any other comments except for um, checking into the health insurance. Okay. For no employees. I just think that if we don't have to, it's another savings. I don't see it as a savings. Right. All right. I just think that, you know, we're looking at all the, rev the new revenue that we've, that we've taken in, Rich. From the new village is covering this increase in staff budget. Right. Um, but what I'm saying is that the how much do we pay out in? I'm looking on this where uh, the um, how much do we pay out for um, not taking health insurance? So you currently is that on, is that on a particular column? It's just it's the if you look at the it's both in the health insurance columns it's three thousand for a year and then it depending on when they come on staff it would okay. be prorated right so they wouldn't get the whole thing but starting next year any staff that's starting it would be three thousand and they get that at the very end of the year mm -hmm. twelve so you're looking at a twelve thousand dollars savings if we took on the extra staff and didn't offer it three six nine twelve. 15, 18, 21,000. Oh, with the, um, so I'm looking at right. the, the additional staff is the, the green, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And the health insurance cost per year low, that's where you would see the green. They didn't see them. So this, this one, this health insurance cost per year low, mm -hmm. this is for, this is, Which one? Which which ones are we actually using? Which currently, ones? yes, we're currently using it right now. That would be the blue. Okay. Oh, well, oh, you mean who are using that one? Anyone that says three thousand dollars on it is not using it. So that's one, two, three, okay. four. 
So four people are four full timers are not using it. So I guess my next question is then, because you have this total compensation here. So the the, the bottom line, right, in, in the low is sixty six thousand. Mm -hmm. The high is ninety five thousand. Mm -hmm. How does it, how is that, those two numbers, you know, some of these aren't used, right? So how is the, how is this number equate to this half of this million dollars? This 995 at the, at the end of this spreadsheet. Because it's gonna be one or the other, right? It's not gonna be both. Right, it's all based on high. Okay, so, so, so you're saying- Total health and other benefits based on high healthcare costs. So that would be the highest that you would pay. So this 66819 is not including this 995,000. No, right. Okay. The 95 yeah. is. Right. The 95 is. Right. Okay. So if, um, if um, one of those three people opted out of um, the insurance um, and um, yeah, then, you know, what, what, let's say that the, the one that would be at 17 with the highest number was, uh, was that, uh, opted out, uh, to take 3000, there's $14,000 savings by there. But if you say, no, we're not going to, going to offer you, we're not going to, Pay you compensate you for um, uh, opting out, then right. the person is much more likely to say, "Well, I'll, I'll take the insurance." Well, it could be rich, but there's uh, there are people that actually you know find it more cost benefit to take insurance elsewhere. I know, okay, for example, I'll use myself as an example. I never fold insurance from the company I worked for, mm -hmm. and I worked full time for thirty seven years. Mm -hmm. However, I didn't need to mm -hmm. because I was I had somebody else that took that insurance that paid better. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um it in um it just so for years and years and years, my company paid me for not taking insurance. Most large companies, if you don't take it, you don't get compensated for it any longer. So you either take it or you don't take it. And I see what you're saying, but I'm thinking there's there. It might, our insurance might not be good enough for somebody to say, well, I'm going to take that insurance versus the insurance that they have today. They might have something that's much better. I don't, I just don't think that we should be paying people to, it's it's like a bonus at the end of the year. And if they, if they weren't taking the insurance anyways, because they didn't need it. So you think people would take, would Prefer, uh, would make a preference to to, to not take seven the the say the the health insurance and get and well if they don't take the health insurance they're gonna if they're gonna automatic and they're a full time employee they're automatically three thousand dollars right right at the yeah if they if they're there for the full year. I just don't know if it's fiscally responsible for us to continue to do that or to do it for new employees if we don't have to. I respectfully disagree. And, and that is fine. <laughs> yeah. That's why we're having this conversation. <laughs> yeah. But I think, you know, when I'm looking, when we're looking at, you know, um, like I said, half of our budget mm -hmm. is salary. And we're looking at increasing, uh, we're, in, you know, we're, we're increasing three full-time if we can and three part-time it's a that, that's a huge expense so, so you're looking at at a potential savings of nine thousand nine thousand that's it but and i'm looking at overall and, and, adding these adding this extra staff is is, is, a, is a significant expense so yeah but the the um if all three opt out then uh, there's a nine thousand dollar savings. A, if all if three right, log, if they all three okay. accept it, then it's, it's more. A thirty. That's uh, thirty or twenty nine thousand twenty eight something right. thousand dollars. So 
9,000. I understand what you're saying, say, you know, but, but you know, I still think it's a crapshoot that they're all going to take it. Just to be. Just I'm to saying have. if any of them take it. Okay. It's, it's a, um, you know, it's, you're, you know, it's at least a break even. I understand that. But that, that number's already budgeted in here, right? Yeah. So. I can check the scene just to okay. give you guys some more insight. Mm -hmm. I'd be curious, I'd be very curious to know what other libraries are doing. Because, and, and so then that brings us, you know, you've got these comments down here, which is, you know, and I think these are great. And I think bringing uh, people up to minimum, this, you know, the minimum wage, you know, you're, I think it's absolutely necessary, right? Um, when it says um, we have to provide sick leave to all staff, including temporary, what does that mean? What does temporary mean? Does that include part time? It could include subs. I'd have to really get a definition of what is temporary. And temporary, uh, it may or may not include subs. I don't know if that's like temporary, meaning we are bringing you on for, say, a month or more. That type of temp. Versus, See, I was wondering if it's contracted for temps. Versus, right. right. That's I, that's more along the lines, but I'm thinking because if you're having a one day sub and they say, I'm, I, yeah, I, I'm, I, not, I'm taking sick day, right. it doesn't make any sense, yeah. right? Yeah, so, I think it's more like a regular temp, which we don't do that. Okay. We just do But it. what about our part-time staff? Well, some of them already get, based on the number of hours, already get um, but some time. They mm -hmm. get right. a little bit. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 yeah. If they can use it. So we're covered for that. Okay. But we don't necessarily use temp today. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions came out? No. So that brings us on the well on the rainbow chart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, that again, and that's kind of see that spreadsheet. So those are broken out there. It doesn't does that So the workers' compensation insurance, uh, we currently have $642 of accrued costs that will be paid out over January through June of 2023. I do anticipate the July 2023 bill will be around $1,300. Um, at that time, I would like to pay that in full uh, and continue budgeting yearly accordingly. So what's happening right now is I, everything gets kind of, some of these ones just get put into the prepaid stuff. Um, and so I'm trying to get some of these to where it's just paid and it's just done. So we're not having this monthly where I'm having to budget again for, it just keeps going. I'd rather just have it paid and done um, if that's at all possible. It seems like we're perpetually carrying it old. Um, I think that is a um, accounting requirement, though, for um, for some. I talked with Joe. Yeah. yeah, he said that there's some things that we can do it with. Yeah, um, and others that. So yeah, I can't. so like the IT uh, help desk, okay. we we could do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of these smaller ones. Well, the smaller ones. I, I don't see a problem with that. The larger ones, obviously, we would like to keep the money in the bank yeah. as long as possible, right? right? Yeah. The, um...
because it may be an audit question about what we um, what we need to do in terms of because I, I think a lot of those these you know you know was was based on reporting like whatever reporting we had to do um, to. Mm -hmm. So that you know the that um, consistent comparison of uh, across different entities, uh, which is part of why they you know they changed the, uh, the account numbers and such. Uh, but I thought some of that was all the why we were doing the the accruing of things that didn't seem like accruable. Um, right. That's what I was, was because of that uh, sort of thing. So I think it was it came out of audits. Do you remember, Jen, and why some of those? Oh, well, like the the mic the um, mics co coming out and you know the where we uh, or even like um, uh, subscriptions that we we get for the year. So we you know we buy it in. October and it's one quarter of in this and three quarters in next year. I mean, it's sort of an accounting nightmare. Why we do that rather than it's an expense? You know, we've done that. I don't remember why. <laughs> yeah, it's been too. Long. I think I remember, it, I remember the mic thing was so we managed the amount. So we knew what it was because like yeah. one month it could be $200 and another month yeah. it could be $2,000. So I remember. Mike's had to do with scheduling and having a contract with him. Mm -hmm. That's the one I remember. But I don't remember subscriptions and stuff like that. Yeah, those are, I mean, I, we've always like split these like year long things into this was in 2020, this was in 21, or this was in 2015, and this was in 2016. You know, it, uh, it's um, rather than it's a one time expense. It happens at this time every year. and you know, if you move it into take it, take the hit one year and then moving forward, you know, we pay the Wall Street Journal on this date and that's for the year. It's a one time expense. And then next year we'll do it. You know, yeah. And, you know, so they come the next October or whatever. We pay for Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do they that. come all the same month? No. They're whatever mm -hmm. we do. Yeah. So yeah. it's probably the case. So not one month gets hit more than. Yeah, I mean, it would, it would one year would get hit, you know, so more than others. Yeah, and then right. going forward, um, and it, it does, it's a lot of math, it's, it has to be done. Um, but I thought we were doing it because of um, the uh, you know, like audit, mm -hmm. and the audit was, was, you know, focused on that because of a requirement up for us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, Joe said for something like that, yeah, it's not some of these small ones I can, but like in the larger ones, you just like, keep it that way. Yeah, exactly. Like you no, know, you'll see I addressed that. Yeah. yeah. So um, or like Johnson Controls wants to renew, you know, again. So that's yeah, that's something that's a bigger one. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that I would put through that way. And it's fine, it's not a big deal. I, in some cases it would, like on this smaller one, it would just lower it a little. Yeah. yeah. Which I can go through and I can redo several of these. And yeah, but I'm, I'm all, you know, it, it also costs time and, yeah. and time is money to, to manage so. each of these things, so yeah. Yeah, if we can, if you can get an understanding of, you know, why we would have to or want to, or that would be great. Okay. Okay, we did add, um, Joe added a new fund number because uh, with the workers' comp yearly audit, uh, sometimes we get money back. So we wanted to 
Yeah, that in there. Tuition reimbursement. Um, I'm not suggesting continuing this. It really wasn't used. Uh, maybe it's something in the future we could add back if you're so inclined. Which it can be more fully developed. It's um, we've had this every year, I think, and you know it's it's a benefit we offer in the personnel uh, manual, and if we don't fund it, then mm -hmm. it's you know uh, it's not really. Do you want me to keep it? Well, it's only six hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, to me, it, I I like the logic of if, if we have it and it we should budget for it. No, no six hundred bucks isn't isn't much okay. of an item, but. Okay, uh, moving down to supplies and carrying on with the budget narrative. Computer supplies. So we've broken out the supplies um, into office collections, computer, uh, so that each of them can be very specific in how we're purchasing. And um, computer supplies includes, this is mainly software, the software side of things, software updates, technology-related supply costs. Um, Per our IT consultant, we are looking to upgrade the computers to Windows 11 for about 30 computers, which is around 500. Uh, in addition, uh, we could use three copies of the Adobe Pro. Uh, well, we'd like to add an HDMI outlet in the garage. Uh, the only current hookup to the projector in the garage is DVD player. Uh, that would help us to hook up our laptops for a variety of programming purposes. Um, and it also allows us to use our document camera and project our story times, allowing the same view of the book both in person and virtual. Do you so have an HDMI hookup in the garage? I'm mean, not the room, the idea lab. I mean, I think they have the same benefit. I agree. Absolutely. Do we have linear? Yeah. We have to have linear, right? <laughs> the garage doesn't have one because it's too bright in there. To do any projections on the wall and everything like that. Okay. We've tried yeah, yeah. projector and it's too bright in there. Okay. Idea lab may have the same issue. No, the idea lab has that issue. Oh. The garage is fine. When you turn everything off and we have the blackout shades in there, the idea lab just has the two walls of window mm -hmm. and the, even with the shades down and the lights off, it's too bright in there to see. But you said you made you the idea idea labs too bright that, to have an HDMI in there? For any projection uh, use. So. Right. <laughs> and it's small. Put up the screen anywhere in there. It's We have to move about four of the tables out of the way so that heads aren't in the Well, you could look at how much it would cost. I was sure that you've gotten the budget somewhere. It's not much. I mean, um, someone's coming in. Rental. It's right. not much at all. And now talk to Mike and see. Okay. Um, okay, because that's only about 1500 total for 1500 for that. Yeah, these are small amounts. I'm still having heartburn about increasing um, um, our, our salaries. I mean, we're really we're increasing that budget by 20%. Mm -hmm. That is massive. For, for, for our budget, that is a tremendous amount. And we're, we're increasing the employees by 20% and the budget by 20%. Mm -hmm. Do you okay. want me to move on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, repairs and maintenance. So this was previously one um, fund. It was just repairs and maintenance services. I decided, uh, Joe and I worked to pull, we are currently still working on pulling and separating out services from supplies. So with this one, repairs and maintenance services, um, with the split, we spent uh, a approximately $2,200 on supplies. It's gonna be around $2,500 for mulch next year. 
and we should anticipate you know, some HVAC supply expenses. So I put that at around, estimated that around 6,000. This new ideal lab supplies is a new fund number. So this is for uh, items such as filament for the 3D printer that I'm, a, a new 3D printer that I'm hoping to uh, get. Uh, we want to start a 3D, print, 3D printing service as well as purchasing other supplies for the equipment general use and promotion of the room. And sanitizing, not much sanitizing supplies, not much needed for that purpose, specific to that. So where did them, um, oh yeah, it was sanitizing supplies we had under like a COVID, COVID before. Yeah. Okay. Which nothing was, um, no funds were specified for that. So this, but around 492 was spent specific to that. So just in general, sanitizing is just, rather than keep it as COVID, sanitizing is just important in general. Yeah. Okay, professional contracted services. So this was a real interesting account. Um, in 2021, it was over by 19,000. It looked like it was like some township employee processing fees. And now that we're more autonomous, we're not having to pay those. In 2022, the director search, uh, attorney fees for the millage, uh, also put it over with recurring monthly expenses on this account. It's going to be over by close to 17,000. Uh, at a minimum, including the yearly audit, potentially adding in a product such as bill.com for ACH uh, payments, on-site payment options for patrons, which I've looked into three different options. Two of them are not possible. One is no longer offering it, <laughs> the government one, oh, that's too good. at least for a year, because okay. there's so much new coming down with things like Venmo and other uh, pay forms of payment like that, that um, they need to wait. And the other company, kind of a similar issue. I guess there's been some new laws that have come out regarding those um, services. And so now they're having to kind of change, providers are having to change how they do things. And so while I think it is something we do want to take on site payment options, we might want to wait a little bit to see what else is there to make sure that we are able to incorporate things like Venmo. I anticipate more and more people uh, are using this. Uh, I know I personally, I use it all the time, but um, we may want to look at, keep looking and find something that can do not just credit cards, debit cards, but Venmo, phone payments, things like that. Um, but I did put in a little bit of money for that based on what we had found from one of our previous things. I just looked at the amount that calculated it mm -hmm. out and edited it in. Um, a few attorney costs for upcoming. So when do you anticipate doing, actually installing something like that this year? I'd like to do it maybe halfway through the year. If those I'm just, places are. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really surprised that we don't have any way to accept the payment except from through cash or check. Mm -hmm. I, unless they pay online, they can still mm -hmm. pay online through okay. TLM and get payments through that. Okay. So it's, it's, we don't have, it's not like we don't have something, but okay. if I can't, if two are already out of the running, that's an issue. I'm waiting to hear back from one other one. So okay. maybe that will come through. If they come through and they have the right options, that would be great. I don't want to see us get into something and then we have to change it. So, and that will affect, I think in, with that in mind, we're not going to want, we, we may want to rent versus buy the, the, equipment. the equipment. Because if it's something that we can upgrade right. based on, sure, then that would be a better idea. So. Um, as well. So anyways, just continuing on a few attorney costs for upcoming policy oh, reviews. And, and just yeah. back to that for a second. Yep. We could ask Tom, should we could ask Tom what they're using? Sure. Okay. I'm pretty sure you don't have to just use a check or cash. Don't you? But I mean, I'll think about that. I'm not sure. 
So you don't think you're allowed to pay your taxes except by cash or check. check. Right. Yeah. And that's the only, you know, that's the only thing I pay to the township. Yeah. <laughs> a big check twice a year. Because yeah. I sure yeah. would like to put it on the credit card and get my points. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I know there are there are some like we have you know, some like permits, right? Yeah. Right. Are they what funds are Yeah, sure, I can all there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know other, I, we have a interest in a house up in the Yeah. Good use check. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm wondering if they, you know, okay. Gee, when I pull permits, what did I do? And if you, if you want to call it. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I've, I've seen the, the counter pews. You know, offer a um, you know an external service, you know that mm -hmm. takes like a three and a half percent, you know hit right mm -hmm. up front, right. Um, so you can pay your taxes by credit card. Um, Who'd want to pay for a nice three and a half percent? Well, they, <laughs> yeah. Well, people, anyway. people that okay. can't yeah. afford to. But maybe the township has something that's you know somewhat cost effective. I'll check into that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you'll see with that, and that's, I wanted to explain that because as I'm telling you that you've over budget and you're currently now, you can see for October of nine, October 19th, when I ran the last uh, report for this, that you were, it was, it was sure. over, um, but it's not because of what's, you're not going to be paying for, that's why it's at 38. And that 38 is going to include um, the strategic planning. No, strategic planning is going to be down below. That I kept, and I'll get to that. That's still kept in proposed projects, so I'll get, I'll get to that one. And I'll, yeah, I'll get to that. <laughs> All right. Um, you'll see that teal line expense. I know last week when you were here, it looked like it was uh, mm -hmm. higher, but that has already gone. That is that amount. That residual has already gone down a bit. Just more bills are coming in. So fifty-five is about a good amount mm -hmm. there. Uh, okay, computer services. Uh, this is again, this is what we were talking about with the IT con uh, consultant, primarily prepaids, totaling 15.5. Uh, it includes, uh, so it includes those IT services and a Meraki cloud license. So all basically, all just the monthly prepaids. So about 16.5. Okay. Okay, advertising and promotion. So we would like to increase our reach digitally. Currently, we pay $14.25 a year for constant contact, provides us a monthly e-newsletter as well as other occasional digital communications. We reviewed four different vendors to replace constant contact and provide more robust marketing services. Uh, we settled on Orange Boy Savannah, which is what it's called. They feature market analysis, integration with library systems, so getting in with our ILS and teaching records automatic segmentation and depth analytics, shared templates and designs from member libraries on staff design systems, creation, drip campaign capabilities, marketing to non-users. So it means that let's say I, and you probably got these, uh, you know, you, you checked out some books or you checked out some materials or you came to a program, but you haven't been for us for two months. You'll get an email like, um, Hey, where are you? Or something, you know, just a little, okay. hello, <laughs> come on back. Um, so, or you have, may haven't seen this. Uh, uh, emails triggered by usage habits, emails tailored to patron use of specific services. One of the neatest things about this is being able to use that census data we, to really reach those non users uh, to kind of dig in and find where are we not reaching people. And, and how can we do that? So they're very helpful with that. That was one of the things we really liked about them. Well, how, what do they use to, to um, figure out who your non-users are? Um, census data. So they're gonna be looking to see who, they can see who um, has library cards, where your pockets maybe you don't have library cards and how you may wanna market to those, so. So we're giving that, that data up to a third party. We're not giving it, they're pulling it. That's how, do they, pull, how do they pull a library card? I Yeah, that I don't know. I <laughs> No, I really, yeah. I mean, how do they define it? You know, how are they gonna know who's got a library card from where? 
I guess I I'm, they can integrate with our ILS system. So that could have a little bit to do with it. But that's not uncommon for these marketing uh, companies to do that. A couple of them do it. So we probably need to have a disclaimer on our library cards that we're actually providing your data to other third-party entities. That's my point. We may, I'd have to do a little more research to see exactly what's going. I'm not sure about all of it and what they're taking and what they're not taking. So, but other I, libraries. That's important to know. Yeah. Because there, we can't be giving up our, um, our library card members personal information like their, true. their location. True. To a third party without notifying those people that we were doing it and having them to have the option to opt out. Well, yeah, and that would what if you either sign up like you do currently for our e-newsletter or you can that, but it, signing out. up for our the e-newsletter doesn't give the library the opportunity to true. sell my email or my location information to a third party. True, true. I will say a number of libraries already use Orange Boy Savannah. So and, and this isn't selling not. This is different than selling the, the the information to a third party. It's having a third party on your behalf use the information that we have. Understood, Rich, but still we have to notify people. We cannot give a third party people's addresses based on them being a library user. We can we are absolutely, we are not allowed to do that without notifying them and giving them the option to opt out of any third party that we participate in. That is a law. I'd have to see more specifically how they do okay. it. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Yeah. I've looked at this like three months ago. Okay, so. yeah. I'm just, these so are just, I was, I'm just thinking, are they set up like other marketing agencies where you still have the data, they're just providing you like the software to splice it how you want? Probably. You know and that, and that's, uh, that's a completely different yeah. story yeah. Than, like, than giving exactly. us giving somebody else the data. Yeah, I think okay. that their point is just regular data and then it's probably mixing with our ILS and it's stuff we're seeing. So, but it's, again, it's, it's just one of those things. It's a privacy thing that we need to be aware of. Totally understand. Yeah. When we watched and met with them, it didn't seem like that was an issue. That's not how it came across. So, but again, I'm happy to double check on that. Yeah, we need to read the fine print. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And that's why I was asking you about the drip, the sort of the drip campaign too. Mm -hmm. Was I was I was wondering how they, you know, are we are we um, pushing that data to them, or are they giving us the capability to do that data work ourselves? Thanks. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so in addition, uh, we obviously want to keep our print marketing three times a year. The cost of keeping there. And then I would also like to get a small little budget just for some swag items. We're doing outreach now. Uh, for instance, next week, I'm going to resource night over at Lakeland. Uh, and it would just be nice to have some things that Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say who we yeah, are and for sure. what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, dues and subscriptions. Uh, it's the next one. Let's see. Oh, bank charges and fees. So um, this one I did uh, connect with Joe, and yeah, so we can have this in here to kind of see what's coming out. Uh, I spoke with him to kind of see if there's anything more than that uh, eighty dollar a month flag mm -hmm. star charge. And he didn't really think so. So I stood that takes us to around uh, about 960. So I put it in at a thousand just in case there was any small little thing that came off. So all right, do some subscriptions. Okay. So this includes memberships to local, state, and federal associations and agencies that help with professional development, networking, new ideas to enhance library services, always great um, to do. Lakes Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, SHRM, which is HR, uh, NLC. Uh, what is SHRM? 
That's um, Society for Human, human Re Resources, Resources Management. Yeah, thank you. I have no idea what that meant. Um, mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Midwest Collaborative, MLA. Um, ALA would be individual memberships. That would be for the director, assistant director, uh, and head of youth and team. You'd see totals there, as well as additional ALA association, sub associations and round tables and what the total there comes. Is, is our library, I thought we were associated too with, um, oh, Amy, help me out here. It's um, ALA. The small, small rural. The small yes. library. No, we're just yeah. The rules. When, rural I, when I started here, yeah, I went to those conferences. Uh huh. Absolutely, we well, had a membership for well, small rural. But we weren't. We we were not affiliated. Where we can you can sign up and go. We're just not members. Because okay, okay, I didn't realize that because Denise signed us up and and I participated. Yeah, the us. library itself was not. You just signed up as a guest to go to the conferences. Okay. A lot of a lot of the association allowed now members to attend. I was going to say, okay. yeah. I thought you went. Mm -mm. No. no, we had one librarian go years ago, but never. We don't attend that one. We're too big. What's the one you attended that was out of state? PLA. PLA. Public PLA. library. That's okay. every, every year, right? Yeah. So that's the even years. So that's why you're not seeing that. I didn't realize that we were not part of the small role. Mm -mm. Okay. I was under the same thing. <laughs> I keep else? getting these emails all the time. Me. Yeah. Yeah. And so I looked at this and I thought, oh, where's that membership? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we those I didn't are, know we were those the ones in Idaho and, and they have like one, you know, if, if they're big, they have a full time librarian. That's yes. also the clerk and yes, I do. I, I, some of their some smaller of their, ones, they have somebody come in. And some of the conversations so. on those email threads are a little, yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, postage, uh, just uh, mm -hmm. keeping that pretty close, but adding in an additional thousand for the investigation and start of a books by mail program. I know that, um, in the millage before I came, it was mentioned about the. My brain is my brain is full of numbers again. <laughs> um, something similar, I think it was uh, homebound homebound deliveries, mm. which is similar. Right. But books by mail allows us to uh, not have staff, obviously, which we can't afford to have staff leaving the building, and we can't rely on volunteers. So this is something. But that, how do we know we can't rely on volunteers? Because we haven't had any. Because we haven't offered haven't this as a, a volunteer opportunity before. We have yes, but then what worries me about that is we're really, we're relying on them to do that. Um, it takes in a lot with them driving their own cars. Mm -hmm. um, I know several sure libraries that do it. That's why. I mean. Yeah, um, I'm suggesting books by mail, having implemented it before, and having it be successful. So okay. Yeah. My first thought was the liability thing if we have volunteers. Yeah. So I, I just know there's several libraries that I know of that sure. do that do library um, and volunteers doing it to the homebound. Right. Yeah. We I've done homebound before and it I it, there was just a lot of issues. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because I talked to a very large library in Wisconsin recently about it, and they and they said it works great, and they, and I asked them about their liability, and they said everybody signs a waiver, and they've got like 15 um, drivers and you know they just and is that since covid um they didn't do they didn't do it at during covid right for about six months and they sit it back on track oh absolutely yeah. yes yeah absolutely yeah so but i don't have time with books by mail either but then you know how expensive does that get to do postage back and forth right because i'm assuming that we have to pay for it to be um, they have to be paid for the return. You do, yeah. Right. And it just depends on the size of the package that you use. It depends on how many. Um, we started doing it um, at my previous library. It wasn't that, uh, not that many people were really taking advantage of it. Okay. So um, I don't know if we'd have to see what, what that looks like here. And that's part of the reason for the investigation is to kind of see, purchase some of the things to kind of take a look at it. What is it? Mm -hmm. What is it? Is it what we were the way the way we want to go? We it's not a bad idea for sure. Yeah. Who is the target for this again? 
Who's like the target patron for the Brooksville program? Well, that's a very good question. So it can be um, it can be a temporary thing. Um, it can be a forever thing. It can be someone that it could be anything from someone that you know I'm temporary temporarily disabled. I, I still want to take advantage of it. It could be a mother, a young mom who's uh, maybe got young kids. I don't think we should be limiting too much. Uh, we'd have to really discuss that and investigate what would be the best options for us here. So the ones that I know of that use it a couple of libraries, they do it specifically for homebound. Okay. People that are in, have an inability to yep. actually um, visit the library in okay. person. I do have some, but my only concerns with some of this with, with the Books by Mail program here specifically is just the whole idea of if someone is truly homebound, I want to make sure that um, their the post office can pick up from them. So that's the only thing I want to. I want to make sure we investigate that they can put this back. They can put this out to, for a call to be picked up, and will that work? Because if they don't have, especially like I know for me, um, with our mailboxes, we have those little you know steel mailboxes with the underneath thing. Um, that you get the key for. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an option there, but not everyone has that. Sometimes right. is their mailbox going to fit it? So we have to make sure. Right. Lots of things to investigate. Right. So, um, okay. and how many items do you allow them to take? Check it. Mm -hmm. But okay. I brought all my stuff with me. So, <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so that's okay. for that. Um, telephone. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to our current phone calls, I personally do not favor having personal cell phones used for work purposes, uh, and I would like each of the managers to have a work cell phone. Uh, all managers are on the building alarm call list, uh, so that is something that we have to uh, currently keep our phones. I know my phone is by my bed when I go to, it's always by me, it's ridiculous, <laughs> it's all my phone time, um, but because we have to hear that alarm. For instance, Sunday, I was sitting uh, there doing some work at home and I got a text from Kim that she had caught the alarm first. She's the first on the call list because she is the closest. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had something with the programming door. And so she was able to alert the police and have them come do a walkthrough to see was everything okay. And she personally came out and um, reset the alarm after that and everything was fine. But so that's just one of the reasons that we have, we are by have our phone spies. Uh, in addition, we communicate uh, building staffing issues regularly. Staff, uh, one day I know that I was going for, I think it was a chamber of coffee and I received two texts from two different staff members calling in. So I was able to then quickly text, text Amy, text other staff and say, hey, this is what's going on. But those are the main problems. The other time was when we lost power. We were constantly in communication for that. As well, as you'll notice some constant communication with all of you, texting you saying, hey, this is what's going on. Uh, this is what we hope to get power back. So keeping people, keeping us staff informed. So you'll see that actually it's really not too expensive. I didn't think so. No. I wish it was I mean, less. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for, for all that, it's including unlimited talk, text, and data. I thought that was a pretty yeah, good deal. That's <laughs> <laughs> but it's not I just looked at it and I went, for a new, for a new account, that's yeah. a pretty sweet deal. I, I don't know who you're going for. But really? $45,000 a month? I think I paid a month. You do? Yeah. I think you must have a grandfather. <laughs> I think we only paid $3,000. Um, well, and this is just a yeah, target. yeah. I can certainly no, you play no. It. Did, did, a lot of people did you? Know, is this is this a specific, specific quote from a? It's just a one specific quote, so I can I can definitely shop. You, you say that, and because it's multiple lines, mm -hmm. because right. it, you should be able to get a multi line discount. Yeah. That's all I was thinking. Yeah, I pay less per line. I, I think you, I, 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 I think you can on my plan you can have seven. Yeah, I can have ten. Yeah. Yes. But I have a multi-line discount. But I don't know what they do if it's a, if it's for a business entity, yeah. right? Check. Yeah. So I didn't think it was that bad of a deal. One one thought there is that some people will having having carried two two cell phones. That's a 
I don't it's like it. I, yes. I, I have to tell you, yeah. I it's, don't like it. Yeah. But we, I, the other issue with it is, is that then, for instance, my phone can be FOIA'd. Right. Mm -hmm. So are you, so, so in the process of this, I mean, I don't have a problem with this, but I think there's a lot of thought that has to go independent. Like, you know, I don't know if you've ever carried, do you carry a company phone? It's right here. And, you, and that company has software on it. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Correct. That's something else you're going to have to do because that phone should not be, have anything on it except. Exactly. Work. And so exactly. it needs to have software that that you as the um, as the executive director, you know, the, the um, director of the library can monitor because <laughs> people do things they shouldn't do. <laughs> what, correct? Yep. Yeah. And then they wonder how they got caught. <laughs> when they're called in and told they're no longer employed. Right. <laughs> exactly. I can't tell you how many people we've walked out the door for things like that. Mm -hmm. Just for misuse because people just don't think about it. But really, no other software should be on it. No other application no, no. should be yeah. on it. it. It's it's a work, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then, um, you know, does it need unlimited text and data? Yes. In the same amount. The amount of calling that I do on my phone and the text that I get from staff, yes. I probably mm -hmm. spend at least 15 or probably each month, two or three hours just doing work stuff from staff coming in and out. Okay. Minimal. But and that's I don't know that that and, I mean it's all of us added in. I mean, I'd have to look to see what I mean. Yeah, I think the we need to look at email and, 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 and alone. Costs, right? Email alone, I would say. Even aside from the text and the calls, okay. it's but people that aren't being it, it, outside of work hours, the department has sh shouldn't really need to be reading either one. Put it on the beach two weeks ago. Yeah, well, not supposed to. Should, not supposed to. <laughs> I, I, to right. me personally, I feel as as a director and as a department head, that's almost borderline irresponsible not to. For Just you, my personal opinion. But for the department heads, I disagree. They they need yeah, to, they, they don't, have to have a work life balance right yeah they don't have to and I tell them they don't have to but <laughs> when you're addicted to it <laughs> right right you have so, work life balance when you retire <laughs> you know and Amy's saying oh well I was on the beach Amy <laughs> next time you go to the beach <laughs> I had over fifteen hundred emails I just said they're deleting emails. it's yeah a lot of it it's a lot of it sad so just, and people call you even when you're on vacation. You need to do well, what I do when I go on vacation. I don't take a phone with me. There you go. go. And you wouldn't have to take your it's my, phone. Phone. It's my personal phone. <laughs> my personal phone. I don't take it. Well, <laughs> no, I see the point. I, look, I think that, you know, it's, a, it's another thing, you know, we're just looking at, okay. I was just saying it's And, you know, how can we really keep the cost do. down on it? Because they really only should be used when you're off-site for emergency contact. That really is what it should be used for. Well, and email, because I mean, if you're, yeah, because if you have to communicate via email, like let's say I have to, or but like people outside the working hour should not be reading that email all the time. Well, but in the, no, yeah, I mean, that's, we're paying them a salary. Yeah. For a very specific amount of hours. Yeah. It's my personal opinion. I know. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. But I get a call that seven thirty. That's the policy. If you're calling in six, so starting at seven o'clock, right. I start working. So I'm using. I have to use my phone to start calling subs. Sometimes that takes a while to understand. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next on that one would be hotspots. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these are very popular and. Good product help divide help the digital divide. Uh, hotspots were previously covered under a grant that ran through June of 2022. We applied in May during the third funding window to renew, and we have not received any response. And I'm sure if you look at Heather's face right now, you'll see how frustrated she mm -hmm. is with we'll dealing with this over and over and over and over and over again. So we're well, still we waiting. We're still waiting to hear. We couldn't keep uh, T-Mobile waiting, so we finally had to start paying on it. Uh, so, well, I think it's important yeah. because I'm, I do. Uh, do we have any checkout? 
Or do we have most of them checked out? All oh, the time. Oh, all the time. Yeah, it's a, I'm always shocked when I go there. There's hot stuff in there? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Someone will come over and give me some. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Okay. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do we have it in the budget to purchase any more? I just budgeted for the 15. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can certainly add, but. That's how many we have right now. That's how many we have right now. We have, we're down, we, we have, we took it down to 10 just to save, um, save some money once we knew we had to start paying for it. So mm -hmm. I'd like to get it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too. For sure. 15. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, uh, let's see. So let's get into utilities. That, uh, 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 hot spots to me um, is a different type of expense than Than telephony. Tele yeah. The telephone is it, it, communication with and to the um the library. You want me to move it to equipment? It seems like hot spots are these are things that we are it's going um, to the public. Yeah, it's a okay. It's a it's a uh, not a cost of of support. It's it's a cost of of the uh, or is it a direct benefit? I don't think. Hmm. Or do you think it's equipment? It's, um, maybe it's not. well. It's more of like a service. It's a service. It's yeah, <laughs> because the equipment's already been purchased. Maybe I could put it in computer services. Well, yes. But I think, did you have, did you have computers? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I would think it'd be more under computer services. Okay. What do you think? Mike? Yeah, that feels more. That feels better? Yeah, I agree. Okay, utilities. Mm -hmm. So, Looking at the Energy Information Administration, 16% increase in electricity projected. And we looked at the gas. What was interesting is that the date I had looked at it, which was a while back, mm -hmm. they had actually said it was gas was going to go lower. But then after <laughs> last week's meeting, I went back on that website and now it was a 28% increase. <laughs> go figure. Um, so I did compensate for that and change that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Water, um, I do, you'll see that 4,000 is left right now, but for the July 1st to August 1st, 2021, there was a, a over $7,000 bill. So I do anticipate that um, that will happen most likely again this year, close to that. So that would put us slightly over on water. So I put us at right. 12. Sewer. Because that probably keeps, um, the, the irrigation. Yeah. Yeah. Is that all usage driven? <clears throat> the, um, the, the cost of the. A pool, uh, it was, uh, I don't know what's in the yeah. fund on QuickBooks. Are you, yeah. you, no, 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 are you is it usage well, of water? And so if we don't use no water, oh, it's zero? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we Oh, no, I thought I thought, it was I thought White Lake was on community well community well well my subdivision is. But they are okay. I guess I was just wondering if we pay you know, when you when you if you're near the mm -hmm. the round things that the stuff goes through, if you're near <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you're near there, they're gonna like we're our we're served by a community well and we have our own individual subject and our subdivision. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the understanding is when that well right fails, okay. then we have to take I guess I was looking, I don't because I'm on I'm on private well and water. Mm -hmm. Um I didn't know how White Lake does their their water bill. Um it's quite impressive. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't because some places do water and sewer separate, and some do water well, this, and sewer this together. Um, together. Well, yeah. every every drop of water that you use also gets um, 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 
charged on the sewer. Correct. Yeah. And Whether it was indoors or out, because I would yeah. not have gone through your sewer, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, because you're really paying for sewage, not yeah. water. But like West Bloomfield, every time you irrigate your lawn, you're actually paying that on your sewer bill mm -hmm. as well as your water bill. Mm -hmm. For every drop you lose, you pay. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. I don't know how it is in White Lake, and I don't think it's the same way. Yeah, we're getting separate bills. Okay. So, okay. That's, but... And and okay, and that bill isn't obviously too much. So we, it would it would it would reflect very much like the summer water bill. It looks pretty sad. Okay. Yeah. I just don't know how many in here. Yeah. I know we're on you know city water here, but I don't know what the what the source is. I think yeah. it, I think White Lake has more community well, don't they? Well, God. Yeah, it's I don't think that I. Is that know. from the, the well over at um, Colony Heights? Yeah, I don't think it's hooked up to Detroit City Water. They, they weren't, they were looking at, I thought they were looking at. Um, right, it's bad. None of us um, in Janice, that part of White Lake to know. I guess yeah, Janice City County uh, hooking up um, the, okay. the, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and over in Lake, we were on Community Well, which is great. Mm -hmm. And we moved to Commerce and we're on City. Mm. <laughs> a little more expensive. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, yep, we will going to the story. Yeah, that was really nice. There's a lot different now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you for the last one. Turn those sometimes off. I don't care if it's wilting or not. <laughs> um, so here's the other side of repairs and maintenance. We had, we separated out repairs and maintenance supplies. Here's repairs and maintenance services. So this one, uh, the hope was to add in three days a week of custodial cleaning, okay. um, plus adding in, uh, you know, if any unforeseen issues that come up to repair things, and then potentially another 3,000 approximately for any more tree air spading and or replacement. Does this include like the the pond and the mold. Um, is that a yes. little different? Yes, yes, it does. Yes. Okay, yes, okay, yep, all right. Recurring costs, yep, okay, yes. okay. I've been through these trees, sorry. Okay, yeah, so we're and we're so with that tree spading, we're about to do uh six trees right now. Uh, currently, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, and get some of those done, looked at, um, and then hopefully get a few more done next year. We've received um, some professional advice that from a couple of different master gardeners that base and from Weed Tree and from Save a Tree. So, two different uh, tree specialists as well as master gardeners that uh, all of the trees are planted wrong. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Everyone it's a matter of time before we either have to replace or hopefully air spading can help save some of them. As it is, um, three trees will be removed uh, because they just don't feel that they are savable at this point with air spading. So mm -hmm. that's where we'll go with that. Okay, so that's, that's that. Rentals and leased equipment, again, primarily the cost for our copier and printing, as well as the storage unit. Property insurance last year. Um, and again, this is goes into that prepaid thing again. If, so if we wanna change that out, we can. Last year's cost was around 13,514, up from about 300 from the previous year. Um, so we're gonna have about five payments from uh, a little over a thousand dollars. So again, this is that another one that if we want to continue to treat it as a prepaid, that can be lowered. And I can recalculate. Okay. Um, I, I take the. But, but why why that much? Because it would it would be paying part of twenty twenty four. Okay, because you know, because last year's budget was thirteen thousand, and then right. this year's five thousand right. more. And I, 
couldn't quite figure out why, right? So you're take you would be taking the total cost plus the five months of payment. <coughs> so if I just did it as the same calculated out the monthly cost, then yeah. it would be less. Okay. All right. So is that something you'd like me no. to? Well, what, what are we going to be truly paying in 2023? So if you're just basing it off of last year's cost, you divide that over the 12 months. So you would just really be continuing almost with maybe a little bit more than the 1126 for seven months. Yeah. So probably around, I'd say 1300, 13,000. So 1300 for seven months. But why, but why is 7,000 a $6,500 difference? I mean, I know there's going to be a small increase in cost. Yeah, your small increase in cost plus the five months payment of eleven twenty six seventeen. Okay. So I would back I would back it into the, the same method. Back into prepaid. Prepaid. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, this no next one is uh, so getting into capital outlay online resources. So this is a new fund. This is pulling out uh, all of our databases into one fund. Previously, these were put into um, other funds and um, made it. It's more. It's just better to have it pulled out so you can see exactly what databases and online resources you're paying for. Okay. Um, so they're all laid out here. All mm -hmm. most of these costs have been confirmed. The majority of them have been confirmed. And they were in other places in the, in the mm -hmm. budget. Yeah. So they're just being pulled out from other places. Okay. Okay. So read the rest is um so. Before that, we had overdrive, which was previously high demand. So this is, um, in, this again was also in other uh, budgets, primarily book budgets. It includes participation and content fee usage, as well as digital magazines. So again, pulling from other funds and then also um, bumping them up a little bit we have had requests for more, the request for more audio, e-audio, e-books continues to grow. What was our budget for, um, so this was pre previously high demand collections, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was that budget previously? So previously uh, it was what you're seeing here is the, so 26.5 was okay. green. Okay, yeah. so, so Hoopla was part of that. Right. Well, yes, yes. So calling out Hoopla there. So you're adding um, 30,000, just a shy of 30,000 to the online, the uh, previous high demand. Am I reading that right? Approximately, but this does include the participation and content fee as well. So there's cost to participate in it. But where did we pay that before? That was taken out of, that was out of TLN. Services, I believe. I have to double check that. Okay. It may actually, it may have been. I'm trying to remember that it's taking out of what part of the participation. Mm -hmm. TLM. TLM, yeah. So that's all for me. So we had budgeted 26 for those two line items. And to date, we've actually spent 38, is what you're saying. Okay. Then you look for that to be closer to 51 next, next year. All right. Mm -hmm. Doing that for Hoopla will allow us to give people more checkouts. To raise people. Just going to ask that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, yeah. Because I'm always going, oh, well, let's just use Hoopla. And somebody in my house will say, do you have any Hoopla locked? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yes. And we save them till the end. And I'm like, people, we have plenty of hoopla because you guys won't let me use it all. Because <laughs> they think they always think, you know, I'm gonna run out of it, right? So which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because we only we get four, right? Mm -hmm. Right now. Okay, so what are we looking at recent there too? Hoopla? Yeah. Ten. Ten. No. Oh, no, you mean 10,000. Oh, no. Okay. Like, no. No, I think you're going to No. No. I think six, right? Is that what we discussed? Five or six. I had a little bit of because we're hitting our max right now. I bet you are. I mean, hopefully we get add a ton of money to. We put it from another budget. So I think we're in five or six max. Okay. Because we're hitting our. We had to take out whole complicated things. Well, some people, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I rarely use it to tell you the truth. I mean, I look at it and go, I'm going to do it. And they go, no, 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 I think we can get it out of here instead. We won't have to use our hoopla. <laughs> I know my son uses his all the time to watch movies. Just at the top of the bucket, like, or the, we have a whole setup of this hits first or this hits first. So, okay. All right. Well, I know it's a popular item. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> you got us all excited. <laughs> Can I suggest a uh, a break? Yeah, yeah, we're almost done with the budget, right? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, I, I need mean, to go okay to pause. It. Yes, pause. Good. Okay. We're back. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks everybody for <laughs> taking a little break. Um. We were on the fund balance. balance. If you don't want to go over any, if the books, we've got the books on there. Yeah. You want to make sure you mm -hmm. all oh, have yeah. a chance to take a look at that. Um, so we're bringing the, the to, we were at 47.5 for the, uh, for, well, looks like we're uh, a, a slight reduction. Is that the shifting? Oh, for, for item 975? For adult books, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's yep. So shifting more to um, to digital, right? But and that's also taking because that's taking some of the digital. So you'll some of that okay. was still taken right. out of books too. Mm -hmm. um, online resources were in some of those collections. So we mm -hmm. really are trying to properly put things where they need to be. Um, Joe and I have again. This is something Joe and I have been working on, and it, you know. It's been difficult for staff because I've asked them to really get into, I've had to pull their QuickBooks things and they're like, well, this is in here. I've got to take that out. This is going to be here. So it's, I've asked a lot of them, but I think this will really help to have them next year to have a nice clear picture of what's going to be So, so, uh, so, so, okay. I'm sorry. Richard. So books would be physical books. Right. Physical. Yeah. Um, yeah. Physical All books would be. Yeah, print book. So, Rich, if you look at like 977.10, see, we budget last year's budget mm -hmm. was 32.5. There's mm -hmm. been less than 10,000 spent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, she's moved 10 to overdrive. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you'll see a lot of those move, yeah. move some to overdrive and move some. Move some. Okay, so that's Other where the numbers for the better factors. Um, there's that high demand collection. So did you I have another question yeah. about this because I didn't do the math. Did you take then all of these that um, those budgets from last year that are that you reduced and you took that equal amount and put it into the into Hoopla and Overdrive? It's a not quite as clean as that. There was other I had to look at everything that was in each thing, say from last year, what was currently in the early part of this year, decide, okay. Does this belong in overdrive? Does this belong okay. in Hoopla? Does this should this go in online resources? And it, it was more of a literally almost like invoice by invoice. Mm -hmm. So okay, and so why I'm asking that mm -hmm. question too is because for capital outlay, mm -hmm. right? We had a budget of four hundred fifty-one thousand last year. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? And now we only have a budget of three hundred four thousand. So it's $150,000 less. Yeah, but I did take it down. And that's also because we're not, we're not spending quite as much too. Part of that is because you had 230,000 from building and improvements from fund balance usage. 
So that's why it was 451,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you really took the 230,000 out of that and you subtracted that, you'd get a more of a an amount of what. But you didn't. And where where did you put the fund balance? What do you mean more than I put it? Well, that well, we still have a fund balance. Yeah, it's still oh, there. One hundred thirty-two fund, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so no, that's that's use of the fund fund balance um, versus right. Well, this is that was last year's budget was two hundred thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. That was the, that was actually the budget that in green, Rich. Right. And no. now the budget for that is you know considerably less, right? So it's it's ninety eight thousand dollars. Well, well ninety seven five less, right? Because we've spent some of it, right? No, that's not the balance. the The two hundred thirty is not the the fund balance. Um, it's how much we propose that's, to that's how, how much, much we propose. propose to reduce it by. And so correct. This, correct. this year we're, we're that was the spend. The yeah. So this year we're proposing to reduce the fund balance by one hundred thirty-two thousand. So in most years, we would expect to add to the fund balance. So not. Absolutely. <clears throat> And there's always improvements that need to be done. But yeah, no, but I'm saying, but it's um, using the fund balance is basically saying you're, you know. And you took into account all the expenses and yeah. all the CDs and stuff, right? Well, they don't have to be in the yeah. budget, but you took into I projected, yeah, okay. I projected in if you look up but the interest. But... You're right. In the past, like going back more than like four years ago, before the, before the building, we didn't really. Think about it in terms of the fund balance. It's true. What did you think of it as improvements? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we want to keep at least three months up to six months. Absolutely. And our fund balance, our rating, it was called the rating. Okay. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Euphemistically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it'll become a little bit more clear when we get down into the fund balance usage and proposed project. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to, if you're good, I can so, move on to okay. that. Um, there's a few things from it that I may move from this to say furniture and fixtures or equipment, but for right now, I just had it down as explaining fund balance. Um, part of this is, so you have your carryover projects that mm -hmm. haven't been done yet. Um, unfortunately, I did get one quote for tiling. I had one do measurements, but haven't heard back from him yet. I know he's been a little bit busy. Uh, so that would be staying there. So that was 2022 projected to be used. Obviously, why we do want to do it. Um, and so that's carried over. Strategic plan consultation, 10 was budgeted for in 2022. All of the quotes that have come in for that have been over 10, um, but under 30. So I bet it changed that to 30. The drive up window, mm -hmm. this is interesting. So 50 was budgeted for. Um, the cost of the window is the windows paid for. Mm -hmm. So that would bring that down. However, there are going to be some rezoning costs. So I kept it that way. Okay. All right. Um, computer replacements last year we budgeted for 30 that was not used so um, uh, not all that was used so this coming year we're only going to need 10. Okay. Before I get to signage let me talk about lighting improvements. So what what's been brought to my attention recently is that the lighting is very dark in several of our shelving units both in youth and adult. I've consulted with uh, library design and um, they are going to be coming out tomorrow with an electrician to see what can be done. Because right now, several of the areas are just way too dark. It's because those long lights that go across are all in, in line as opposed to being staggered. If they were staggered, then we probably would have better light. But there are just some that are so dark. Some of our shelters, it's it's difficult to sometimes even see 
um, that first uh, area in youth, when you first come into youth and you turn left into the middle grade, it's that one right there, as well as the next one over isn't quite as bad. And over in adult, it's over in the early nonfiction area mm -hmm. right there. And then one like over here. We know. Okay, good. Okay, great. I'm always we're aware. <laughs> great. So we're we're looking to improve that. Okay. Okay. Um, the signage, again, I'm waiting on some quotes for that. Some of it's starting to trickle in. We'll get some of it done this year. But again, that biggest thing is can we potentially get that um, donation tree, if you will. Uh, accomplished, then you know, let's see about that. Looking at, I did quote out some new websites if we wanted to go in that direction. It's the first impression for a business and libraries are no different. Uh, if we are going to look for educational sponsorships from our local businesses, it'd be nice to have a better looking website. Uh, large range in this one, huge range and uh, yeah. Are we looking for just a, a web designer? Are yeah. we looking for anyone to manage? So it's a little bit of both. Um, I think we still want to do a lot of our own management, um, but in a lot of some, especially with some of our HTML and smaller, getting into the nitty gritty of that. But so this, most of them allow for that. So what you're seeing is that basic, that low end is kind of like a new, basically a new uh, like platform as if in us doing, putting in the content versus full on yeah. management, everything, blah, 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 which that's not what we're interested in, but I wanted to show you the full range. I would say it's probably somewhere in the middle, there is more of what. And we were involved when we, when we changed over to the people we're still using, we weren't in, would Maria have been involved in that? No? But only did these, only did these did that, okay. <clears throat> would this be something our administrative assistant slash marketing person would do? Correct. <laughs> if we were to have such a position. <laughs> um, last one on here is these desktop privacy screens for the public computer corrals. I've added some pictures in there. But we don't. Those are just a long road. Are we changing that? Uh, well, even though they're in a long row, it would still be nice for them in that way because it does give a little modicum of privacy, but we are thinking of changing them and moving them. We don't need the amount of public computers that we currently have. They're never in full use. Um, so as some of them die, it, we may not need to replace them. Okay. So we may shift the way the tables are rather than being in a line. We may shift them more like this and be more staggered like that. Uh, and that would also allow for these. They are not drilled into the table. I understand. So yeah. actually you don't have to, we luckily would not be damaging the table by using those, this type. Would you get the, would you get like, try get the pricing off by the internet? Or? No, I had library design come in and give us a, a quote for that. Because yeah, uh, Image 360 does that kind of stuff too. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, ask, you know, I, he's doing those plastic shields for a, I can get another yeah, quote. So get another quote. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> I just didn't see the need for it if we kept them in the current. They situation. still, people can still see like straight through. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, I haven't had any complaints. Let's just say that. You've been but having I complaints? haven't had any complaints, but. I was just, you know, in line of all the other money. Mm -hmm. Yep. I wasn't sure what the, the we were doing. And it is just, yeah, it's just an option. But yeah, check them because they may have a, a less expensive solution. Okay, so the total from 2022 um, that actually we want to carry over is around 105, but with some of those changes. So a few additions, uh, 126, again, not including the lighting improvements and signage, which I can put placeholder numbers in, <laughs> but um, I'll have to see about that. I may have that before your next budget meeting. So I 
multi-layer. New projects for 2023, um, and again, this is something that uh, I'm hoping to get, whether it's through here or if it's something that maybe I can go with the friends offering uh, their uh, nice amount that they are. This is for, uh, that's a high-end 3D printer, and we can we can certainly go much lower, but the one we have right now is, it's, it's about yay big, and it's open. So it's not something I can even put in the public to market to say, we offer this and for someone to be able to come in to look, to work with robotics teams and have them come in. And, um, so I'm looking to maybe get, um, my experience has been with uh, Dremel. So you can, the Dremel usually has a nice one that's about big, it's enclosed. Um, you can bring even more. Uh, still under this cost, you can get a raised 3D printer for maybe around three thirty-five. dollars um, Can we use it to make tchotchkes to give away? <laughs> you can use it to make tchotchkes to give away. <laughs> um, but even so better. Marketing. <laughs> <laughs> your marketing swag line. I right. <laughs> what, what the, what's the cost of building one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna... But even better, you can... Um, you, you can charge mm -hmm. more, so um, you can make some money with it. And, uh, <coughs> and we right now are just beginning to play with it ourselves. We have one patron we've kind of, kind of has been using some of his ideas um, to test it out with, but because we don't have policy or quite have procedure in place yet, we're not offering it yet. Okay. Right now, I think only we can use it. Mm -hmm, well, yeah. We can't. We aren't letting patrons use it. Yeah, we both, but we do have one. And and so, what patrons? The only way patrons would be using it. Uh, one thing we could do is we would be offering. So, let's say a great program that we used to do uh, my at my previous employment was um, instead of the um, what's it? Those little cars that they race. I'm with so, oh, okay. I'm with we would do a three D. Penguin Derby. I thought about that when yeah. you some, uh, and Penguin you get Derby. you know uh, we know some I know someone that has the track and so what it was is over a couple of months so you, you would have the kids come in you teach them how to create an STL file um, and then you slowly they then submit it you you print it they come and pick it up they take it home they design it they show up that day and it's a 3D printed derby a lot of fun it's always fun. <laughs> it's, it's a good oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> I remember my little quarters to my Where do you put the quarters? So lots of good things. I used to partner with robotics team. Um, there's from all sorts of um, ways to use it. And that's so just a, a great piece of technology that uh, sure. is definitely up and not even up and coming. It's here. It's here. So, um, so some, again, so just talking about this again, I'm just looking at what was done in the past. So if you want to see something different, if you want to see some of these things that are down in proposed projects be put into actual fund numbers and budgeted for, I'm happy to do that. It's it's all what you I some of this I need to know what you want to do. Where is what is our fund budget or fund uh, balance sit now? Oh, it's all okay, yeah, the fund balance, yes. Yeah. So and I want I want to go back to the capital outline before we're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for for the you're very you're doing a very good job. Yes, right. which, yeah. uh, you know, I, I appreciate it because, no, I do too. Our, our, our um, what do you call it? No, our it charter better. says that we're fiscally responsible for this, yes. right? I, so I appreciate I'm just thinking we have another meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we have, we have a meeting. Really, yeah. yeah. I, I could make a suggestion that next year we do this like as a separate day of the week. Day. <laughs> Just, just, uh, just, uh, um, okay, so 984 currently, um, I did print that out for you. And this is where I'm going to have to put on my readers over my guide. <laughs> okay, so what has come out of this one uh, over the course of the time here, it looks like a 
ABT, Honeywell, Max Pro, Sudor, Access. Did you print that for us? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, so I don't need to look for it. No. Um, the cost of the window, okay. the continued uh, progressive irrigation lawn installation. That was the largest so far. Uh, Johnson Controls. Uh, they had some. We had some things that had to be fixed. The chess set, mm -hmm. okay. checkers, that big box that holds it all. Uh, the seal coating, the uh, landscape, uh, some of the landscape replacement stuff, and then the air stating uh, that the trees will come out of that. Mm -hmm. That's not currently this, but that will be coming out of that. So that's where that is now. It, the total for it with out the air spading is right now is 35 814 60 which is right there on line 94 correct mm -hmm. to do. and that'll go up by an additional 3800 okay so that's okay. where that building and improvement 984 is at all right so the only other thing I wanted to say about this capital outlay, because I was, you know, I was doing some of these numbers in my head. Mm -hmm. And um, so if we take out 984 out of capital outlay, mm -hmm. all right, there's still a $49,000, so $49,700 difference in less. 970 to 984 less than last year. Mm -hmm. And those are services to our, you know, to our patrons, right? Mm -hmm. So... You know, we don't have grant expenditures in here, which I don't really know what those were for, or VIP fund purchases. Those are both zero. Mm -hmm. Furniture and fixtures, we don't need to worry about, mm -hmm. right? So I I deducted that, and that's another 14.8. That leaves us $34,900 less in capital outlay that we budgeted for this year than we budgeted for last year for services to our patrons. It's yeah, $35,000 less. Yeah, I've made some cuts, mm -hmm. but if we move furniture, if we move from, that's why I was asking about the proposed projects, because some of those can be moved to furniture and fixtures, um, equipment, some of that can be moved there, so that would bring it back up. So technically, I, you still really have to count that fund balance because... Yeah, it, you still have to I'm just count saying the from, fund balance. From 972 to 978... Really, which is you know things for our our patrons. Oh, okay. We reduced thirty five thousand dollars from that budget. Well, from, some of it's also not getting. Some of it hasn't isn't not all of it's used too. No, so, I'm saying from last year's what we budgeted totally to what budget. you're budgeting for this year, for 2023, you've reduced that by almost thirty five thousand dollars, and what we're spending for our patrons. From well, 970 you got it. Yeah. to 978. I think that is that 26.5. Is that in yeah. there twice? That, that 26.5 is high demand is in there twice. Yeah, yes. it is. Yeah, so that it 20, is. there's 26.5 that, that wasn't. It's well, in yeah. there twice. 26.5 twice. It's, it's at 972.01. And 978 yeah. that got the same yep. name. It is. I put that in there because I wanted you to still mm -hmm. see high demand. And I should have, yeah. I should have not zeroed That's that good. out. All right, I'll look at last year because I had last year's budget I was looking at yeah. too. All right, so I'll zero that out. But we're still talking ten thousand dollars less than what we're spending for patrons, mm -hmm. even if that's the case. And I'm and happy I, to pump it up. <laughs> that's what I mean, we needed to spend in our money. Yeah, I agree. But there's a lot of it that wasn't spent. It was budgeted right, for the but past our time. budget is even less. And in those budgets were pretty um, you know, we look at those budgets from the year before, right? We've we've never not spent the um I just the think the budget for it is and, my point. And the uh, we shouldn't be reducing our yeah. budget and what we're spending for the patrons. So some of it we haven't spent, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But if you look at 2021, what we budgeted, what was budgeted, and then what was used, they were very close. And so then they were budgeted just similar yeah. the next year. And that's year over year. But... Right. 
Yeah. And so I don't think that that is, I just don't think that that capital outlay is someplace we should be even reducing more. So yes, I see right here that that 26.5 is, is duplicated. Mm -hmm. So it's just slightly less, but it is less. Yeah. Okay. So it comes to about $8,500. Yeah. I just think we should spend as much as we can on patrons. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> just trying to. Yeah. I know. And, and actually, this has been very nice. Yeah. This has been great. Because okay. we now we you know, we truly understand what money's being spent <laughs> and how it's going to be. Okay. So okay. it looks like I got a few to do's. So thank you for all the details. Thank you. Are you going to need another page review of the to do's before we finalize the budget? Mm -hmm. I, I, I would hope that we could do it in because I don't think that they're going to be that drastic, right? So that we should be able a to do it. A lot of the to do's in. aren't, they're more, a lot of these look like they're more question related as opposed to, um, and then there's just a couple accounts that looks like I'll go back to just doing a prepaid thing versus a payout, um, which that's looks like it's in about two. No. You're going to take the audit. Mm hmm. Okay. No. Um, I don't think we need any more. And again, I'll probably, once I get it done, I'll send it to you again for your personal review. And again, if you have questions or things, or you, you're still not getting something, reply to me and I can answer that. Personnel information. Okay. So, Jen, last year we um, had this meeting, then at the November meeting, we um, had the motion to approve the budget. We just did it right within the Yeah, and, and, yeah. and the changes yeah. were made to the budget and they were commented on. There was a comment that you need to separately. Oh, this part. Not on that. Do we want to do, we want to do that for the next evidently the next meeting won't be able to see that. Right. Just see what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, hang on. Okay. Right. So, I had sent her a lot of questions. There you go. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, so, you made the motion? I made the motion to send special I second the motion to um, close the public budget. The, the, um, budget. Sure. Okay, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. You didn't type it, but no, I mean, you made the motion, you seconded it. Yes. Now we have discussions. So, okay. There. So, uh, would you like to weigh in here? <laughs> yes. I was just reminded of something that uh, for the. Um, oh. No, actually, I think that's not under capital outlay. I was going to say we're not doing PLA this year, so that might have affected for the conferences, but that's not capital outlay. So, okay. Okay. Well, okay. All right. I don't, I'd like to, um, before adjourning, uh, look at the look at the bottom line and say, you know, uh, we've looked at the, we've looked at the detail at the, at the overall perspective, mm -hmm. uh, with the total revenues of 170, well, well uh, 1.73 1, 1. million and total expenditures of just slightly above that. Um, that has to be balanced as well. Yeah, I, have, I, I had it balanced and then I had it balanced down to $2. <laughs> yeah. And then because I really was trying not to go to use, to just have one balance match up with the building and improvements. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't. And finally I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to. So okay. that's, yeah, welcome back. Okay. No, no, it's about 8,500. No, 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 that was. No, that, that was, was in nice. the 2022. 20, oh, yeah. Yeah. That was nice. um, so I, I'd like to comment that it with um, it, there's a, I get and I guess the, the balance of the of the of the changes um, 
is feels a little weight overweighted to personnel than to um, than to um, and that will affect services obviously to to uh, to the patrons uh, um, versus you know and so point pointing out the you know the the capital you know sort of being a little bit out of uh, out of whack and at the same time. Um, noting that the per, that the uh, the amount of available for uh, for additional income for the our current staff is um, maybe not keeping up with with inflation um, there that I, I think it's worth taking a, a taking a step back from that and say is it will this work for us will will we be able to um, keep people at at these rates and and you know and um, is it really match what we you know it doesn't meet the mission there and, and to me it's feeling like it's I'm I'm feeling that overall we're doing lots of good things, but are we but we're a little bit off of the off of the point that we were well I think that the um strategic planning will help that. Okay. It's a good point. Question. Yeah. Good point. So we're doing that sooner rather than later, right? Like which board? There, so I want to throw that out there before. Um, I don't like that how much that of the budget that we're spending on staff mm -hmm. because it's it seems a twenty percent increase in staff and in that in that and we're and we're actually spending less on patrons. It, it's hard to it's hard. It to is, see. but still, staff. You, we can't serve the patrons if we don't have the staff. I understand so that, that's, but we're doing get some of it. We're doing more than a twenty percent increase in staff. Well, it's. I mean, it's short. It's yeah. it's it's okay. borderline. I mean, I have librarians covering the surf desk, mm -hmm. and, and while that's that can be common in some libraries, we're a large enough library with a lot going on that that's not easy to do especially when you have such a short staff it's the, the desk coverage is just i gotta have a body there i mean i don't want to put a sign but some days i'm getting to that point where it's like i'm like i may have to put a sign that says please use the other desk down you go down in children's and there's nobody there or you go it used to, to happen at the, at the small library yeah it and was, that's, it was common <laughs> yeah I, yes I, I get there it. wasn't as long before it wasn't as long before <laughs> It's a tough, it's tough sure. yeah. and I understand that, but it's also very hard to see that it's our budget. Out. It is yeah. when <clears> more <throat> than half the budget is staff. Yeah, I mean, I and I, staff expenses. It's hard to. It, it's really hard to see. I mean, that's what I said when I was doing that. Was telling me, I started. I mean, it's the reality, percent, it, right? And I was so. Oh, I get hard to see. Percent. They work hard, and, and I'm not. Oh, I, and I'm not begrudging any. Our staff no. is fabulous. Yeah, our staff yeah. is absolutely fabulous. And I'm, you know, looking at the cost of living in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. It's it's tough. Yeah. And then when when we go to post, I'm like, is this going to be, is this going to be enough? Is this range that I'm offering going to be enough? Because they're so every library is posting every other day. You see postings. Sure. Mm -hmm. and then, like, so, like I said, I mean, it'd be great to have that. That's, oh, that would look great. It'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. But I'm not terribly confident when I go to post. That you're that going to fill out those. Fill those spots. So, you fill that youth part time position that we posted for. Okay. Okay. So, do you advertise that at the, it, at the, it, at the, at the university? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it easier to fill full time spots than part time spots? Well, I here I will we've done it, we've been lucky enough to do more of like from within. Um, so that's that's been a blessing in the five months I've been here. Because uh, if you're uh, looking for three part time librarians, can you combine 
to get one and then you're going to reduce some of your expenses on health insurance and all of that stuff or just like the well, children's one director does never the children's librarian never talks to the adult librarian because what they do is so different or could one person build your children we've been different. creative like that we've been creative where we've, that, yeah, where we've got it's easier to fill a full time than it depends on what you you posted for because sometimes you do get um, very specialized. Usually, youth librarians are much more like that's what they want to do. They're not. They it's, want to the kids. Uh, right. Um, I come from a situation where, yeah, you you your what you ordered may have been youth, what your programming may have been youth, but you were still expected to do all desks. So you, you had to know. You had to know your stuff, and and you may and you were given the opportunity to do whatever uh, programming you wanted to do. So yeah, I mean we can we can do that. Okay, because, 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 but that. with and and that would be easier in a market where you know there was more people applying than there were jobs, mm -hmm. because then we could say, well, we want right. Well, I you what you have to do this this this. this. Okay. Whereas now it's kind of like, well, I can take you or leave you. Yeah. I didn't mean to spend the meeting. I renew my um, proposal. <laughs> yes. I second that. Yeah, yeah. I, I second so, that. Yeah, that's so, well, we're still in discussion, so that's still like so. Um, I'll bring it up for a vote uh, to adjourn the meeting. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it by a narrow margin. And we adjourn the meeting at nine. Oh, no. Nine or nine. Okay, nine there nine. it is. Yeah. Um.